All right, welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. I'm your host, Taylor, and today I want to talk a little bit about igniters. So this is a uh, this is an igniter. This particular one is out of a quadrifier pellet stove. Um, lots of different igniter uh, styles and types that are out there, uh, just depending on the make and the model of the stove. Uh, all of them essentially act the same way. So the igniter is generally at the base of the fire pot. Some of them it's right in the fire pot, and some of them it's below the fire pot. Uh, but essentially all of them are functioning the same way. During that initial startup cycle, uh, as the unit feeds, this uh, igniter is going to get uh, a charge to it and basically become cherry hot. The air that is rushing past this igniter is actually what's lighting those pellets, not the igniter itself. Uh, so it's that superheated air from our combustion that's coming past this igniter that's actually lighting our pellets. And obviously once the fire is lit, uh, it'll reach proof of fire or, or reach temperature and from there go into normal operation. But anytime that we start experiencing issues with our stove igniting, uh, there's a few things that we want to look at. So I guess first off, as I mentioned, it's the air that's rushing around this igniter that's lighting your fire. So if you're first having issues with ignition, uh, I always tell people to check the basics first. So uh, need to make sure that the door gasket seal is tight all the way around. Uh, need to make sure that any uh, ash pan door that we have, if there's a gasket on there, that that's sealed tight all the way around. Uh, depending on your, your make model style of your burn pot, that burn pot needs to be seated all the way down in proper positioning. Uh, we always want to check the holes in the burn pot, make sure none of those are, are plugged up. Uh, and then ash in the stove. Um, always important to be going through our regular routine cleaning and maintenance. Uh, as ash builds up in the stove, it can restrict the air. If I don't have enough air rushing past this igniter, I'm not going to be able to get ignition um, during that startup cycle. So uh, just a few basics there of, of things that you may want to look at if you're running into issues with uh, uh, with your stove lighting or with your stove starting during, during that initial startup cycle. Um, one thing that I find with igniters is that there's a really easy foolproof way to let us know whether or not the igniter is good or bad. Um, so that's kind of what I want to show you here. So I just have a basic, uh, basic multimeter here. Uh, very inexpensive, you can get these anywhere. Uh, but I have this set to ohms. Uh, so uh, uh, my personal preference is I have it set to the 200 mark on ohms. Uh, that gives me the best reading as I'm looking at pulling ohms off an igniter like this. So I have it set at 200, uh, and then from there, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my uh, my black lead, my red lead, and I'm going to make a solid connection with the spade connectors that are in the igniter. And from there, that's going to give me a reading. So on this particular quadrifier igniter, I am reading ohm range of 36.8, 36.9. Uh, now, I personally know for the quadrifier igniter that this is within operable range of this igniter. Uh, but I will say that depending on the make and the model and the style igniter that's in your unit, there are a lot of variances on what that operable range needs to be for the igniter element. So, um, uh, in the description of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a list of the most common igniters that we see and what those optimal ohm ranges need to be. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a great way for me to just to simply disconnect these wires from the lead wires that are in the stove. Obviously, anytime I'm dealing with anything electrical in the unit, always want to make sure that it's unplugged from the wall. Uh, but once I have it unplugged from the wall, I can literally just disconnect these igniters or I can pull the igniter all the way out. And again, just use a, a very basic multimeter, uh, set it on over to ohms and this is going to allow us to get a, a nice accurate reading and and really at a glance it's going to let us know whether or not the igniter is good or whether or not the igniter is bad. Uh, obviously if it's outside of that optimal range either lower or higher that's going to give us indication that we need to replace the igniter element. If it's falling in between the optimal range of ohms then there's something else that we need to look at. Uh, again it's the air that's rushing past that igniter so uh, after we check the basics with uh, gaskets and you know burn pot seating, how clean the burn pot is, uh, ash blockage within the unit, ash traps, exhaust manifold, exhaust, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we could also take a look at the combustion fan itself, make sure that our combustion fan is running to proper voltage. Again, in most stoves during that startup cycle, that combustion fan should be operating near line voltage. Uh, if it's not, 
uh, I won't again have the velocity that's coming through. Um, depending on um, what voltage it's running at, it may even trip the, uh, the vacuum switch that's in the stove or, or not allow that vacuum switch to lock in, uh, not allowing it to feed fuel. So again, I always tell people, start with the basics first. 90% of all of the issues that we ever see with a pellet corn or coal stove generally have to do with cleaning and maintenance. So let's make sure the unit's clean. Let's make sure our gaskets are tight. Let's check all the basics first. From there, if we're still having issues with ignition in the stove, let's grab a little multimeter here and let's see whether or not the igniter is in proper ohm range. Uh, and from there, that can help us uh, quicker get back to being warmer. <laughs> and that's what we all want. So uh, any specific questions uh, regarding igniters, your particular stove, any other questions that you might have, that's what we're here for. Just leave a comment in the video below. Uh, always happy to help. And um, other than that, thanks for joining us for another session of Pellet Tech 101, and we'll see you soon.